thank you everyone for tuning in. As you all know, my name is Javier Peñalba and this is your Transmute Yourself weekly live show where we talk about topics related to fear of commitment so that you can create fulfilling relationships. Today we'll talk about three tips to let go of past pain. Before we start, I want to tell you that this is not therapy, this is not psychological advice, all right? This is mainly advice from my experience, the experience as someone that has gone through trauma and through, uh, let's say, difficult experiences himself. And these are things that have worked wonders with me. But if whatever it is that you want to go, that you want to let go of, right, whatever trauma or difficult or painful situation it is, that maybe you feel it is something so heavy that you don't dare looking at uh, the eyes directly. Maybe it's something that you get so scared even of, of thinking about or, or talking about. Then seek help. You know, you can always look for a psychologist that specializes in trauma and that's totally fine. I did that myself. A lot of my healing was self-help. Yes, I, but I also looked for help from a psychologist and who helped me a lot. So. That's just my, my caveat and my recommendation so that you know. So before, um, now we can start, right? This is again, three tips to let go of past pain. Tough experiences, especially experiences from childhood are things that a lot of us go through, right? And this is not, dif this is not different with people with fear of commitment. Actually, their experiences tend to be very, very intense. They tend to have been, for example, uh, neglected by parents, sometimes abandoned. Sometimes their parents were very strict, very cold. Sometimes there can be some type of abuse or trauma and this type of things, right? So what happens with a lot of people with commitment phobia or, or fear of commitment, right, is that they don't want to feel that again and they block those emotions. It's that as if they close the door so that they cannot feel that again and they of course they evade they uh, avoid this type of, of events that can generate those emotions because they don't want to feel that but in the process they also block out positive experiences like connection like trust like love so they might feel safe yes they might look confident yes but they're not really living out their, their life to the fullest because they cannot connect very deeply with other people and with their emotions. Now, the tips that I will give you, they might help also, of course, for people n without fear of commitment, for anyone actually. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of background of what it can do also for people with, with fear of commitment. But in general, as humans, if we can connect to all emotions, be it emotions uh, on the negative and on the positive side, that's really when we can start living out um, our life to the fullest. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, they, they can build these emotional, this emotional walls and one of the tips or the greatest advice that I can give uh, as a starter is actually to heal your past, to do something about that. And the tips that I'll be giving you are exactly for that. So you can start first by just noting down or writing down the, 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 five, the top five experiences that bear the most weight on your shoulders. Those that are the most emotionally charged and you can just rank them from 10, from one to 10, right? One being least emotionally charged and 10 being most emotionally charged. Now, the next recommendation will be very personal. It will depend on each one of you if you really want to imp uh, implement the tips that I will give you. And it is to start with that experience that is the most emotionally charged. Why do I say this? Because usually the other ones just tumble down. They're connected. It's energy. It's all energy. Once you can forgive whatever it is that's the strongest, then the other ones tend to, to feel weaker. You don't really feel that, that pull anymore. Um, that would be my recommendation, but some people are really, maybe they, they are a little bit more afraid or, or more have more respect towards their own past and their own emotions. So they can also start with those experiences that are least emotionally charged 
and then move from there and then try the, the process that I will explain to you with, with other experiences. I myself like to go directly to that, that uh, which bears, again, most emotions for me. The last advice that I want to give is that you try this with someone that hurt you. So as, as, I, as I will be speaking and give you the three, the three tips, think of someone. So situations in general, right? They involve people usually. So this can be easier first to apply with someone again that hurt you. And then you can apply it with yourself if there's something about yourself that you have not forgiven because we also hurt other people, right? And that's, that's normal. Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's harder actually to, for, to forgive ourselves. So start with someone else. Once you trust the process a little bit, then you can even do it with yourself and see the results. All right. So with this disclaimer and this background on what we'll be doing, one last thing is that what, once I give you the three tips, I'll give you a tool. I'll explain through an example, a tool that can, can put everything together so that you won't feel that lost. It, it may feel a little bit like that as I'm speaking with about the tips, but you'll see, you'll see it very in a concrete way once we get to, uh, to that tool. All right. So first of all, it is to recognize the pain. Usually when something bad, something tough happens, we, we act tough. We act as if it never happened, or we tell ourselves that we're fine, that we don't need help, that it didn't really affect us, that we can just move forward and we're strong, right? And that's fine. That's totally acceptable. But if you really want to heal it, if you really want to let this go, it is okay. It is actually necessary to recognize it, to recognize the pain. You can ask yourself, how did it really make you feel? Did it make you feel sad? Was there any anger? Did you feel like a victim? Or did you feel whatever it was that you felt, right? Just really sit down, feel it and recognize it. Because what we're doing is we're putting up that wall and we're avoiding situations. And then we feel fear from situations that can trigger that emotion. So if you recognize it, you're opening that door again. And then you can feel that and other great emotions as well. You can think as well, how has it affected your life? It's fine. It's really fine to just let it all out, you know, and, and to recognize it. No one dies of just consciously feeling and recognizing whatever it is that they, they're, they're avoiding. It's a little bit of pain. It's sadness. Sometimes it's, um, it's more worthwhile to feel that and to recognize that in one little moment, it, it can be a couple of hours, then to feel and then to live in suffering for most of our lives or to live in fear. And sometimes it is necessary to go through that first for healing. So this would be my first advice. Really be honest with yourself, be authentic, recognize how it has affected you, what fear, uh, what suffering and what pain was involved in whatever it is that, that happened to you. The second one, it is to use compassion. This is the second tip. So a wise man said once, when we all learn to put ourselves in the shoes of others, all conflict in this world will disappear. So this is, I find this phrase very, very aligned with the compassion that we, as um, someone that wants to forgive, right? And to let something go of. This is the second step using compassion. So, but it's not that easy, right? It's, it can feel a little bit like, ah, uh, yeah, feeling compassion for someone that hurt me. Like, how can I do that? Right? Especially if you are at this point, either sad or feeling anger. Um, if you did the previous step correctly. So, um, it might help to know just to have a little bit of background that when we judge others, when we are getting angry at others and, and just judging them as uh, bad people, for example, we're judging an interconnection of events that led to that person being the way that he or she is and let him or her to inflict pain in you. Actually, most of the time when people inflict pain in others, they're just paying back the pain that they themselves received 
For example, a lot of parents, they were beat up as they were growing up. And then they, they, they have this anger in them and they beat up their kids. And they justify that saying, yes, because I was beat up by my parents. It's normal, right? But not it's not just that. It's actually that they're paying back that pain and they, they're just repeating that cycle. It's not unheard of of people that sexually abuse, that were sexually abused, they also sexually abuse other people. So you see, we, we're just in that cycle and we're many people repeat it. So when we judge the person that inflicted pain in you, you're judging whatever happened to them and all those events. So you don't need to know exactly everything that happened. You just need to know because sometimes it's, it's not easy, right? Sometimes we cannot get into their minds and they cannot, they don't even ask for forgiveness or they don't tell us what happened. But we have to know that when people are in pain, when they suffer, they're at the mercy, they're subject to their emotions and to their thoughts. It's as if they're not themselves, they're possessed by, by this uh, emotional body. And they just do what they think is, is right based on those emotions, based on that anger or that suffering that they have. So it, it can help a little bit to know that when, when you judge that person, you're just judging everything that's around that and it's, um, it doesn't help, right? So at this point, right, once you have that little bit of background, you can just ask yourself, what was really the situation like for this person that hurt you? Did they go through any suffering? Do you know anything? Maybe do you know if, if they suffered as they were growing up or, or uh, at the moment when they were doing whatever they did, do you know how they were feeling or thinking? Can you just close your eyes for a moment and leave your shell and put yourself in the shoes of that person and, and try to feel what they were feeling? It's hard, right? I know, I know it uh, by experience because we have a big ego as well and we don't want to leave that and, and to just accept that the other person might have also had, had their issues. But if you really, really want to let this behind, it is a necessary process. So that's my recommendation. Just put yourself in the other person's shoes and try to feel what they were feeling. You don't need to understand everything. Just try to, for a little moment, understand uh, or see through their eyes and feel through their bodies. And you'll see how acceptance and forgiveness starts pouring out of your heart little by little. Now, and it's important to know that in the previous step, you might be sad, right? Or you might be angry, but you're feeling emotions. And as you're feeling these emotions, it's easy to feel other things like, like compassion, right? So that's why I, I put it as a step number two. And now the third tip is to, this is a lot more empowering. You'll feel a lot more energized as, as you hear this tip. And it is to see the flip side, the other side of the coin. So not all traumatic or, or negative experiences uh, result in only negative things. They also result in positive things. Now I will give an example. Someone who's actually looking, uh, who, who's watching right now, who's very dear and very close to me in, in the last workshop that we had, she said that, um, well, just to give a little bit of background, her mother abandoned her and her daughter and, and her um, sisters, right? And they were raised by their father who was alcoholic and also by stepmothers. So it was a very dysfunctional family and somehow it was not, it was not nice, right? It, it was a bit of very traumatic, I would say for, for her and for them. And uh, she said that as a result of that experience and, th and that abandonment, she actually became very, very loving with her, her kids, her own uh, son and daughter. So this just shows that not only bad things come out of, of negative or traumatic experiences, there's all, also strengths and opportunities that came, came about. You know, I can give my own example. If it weren't because my father died as I was a kid, probably I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here in Germany and I wouldn't have studied and, and grown up the way that I have. So there's a lot of positive things that, that we can think of that can allow us to really accept at that point 
and it will make it a lot easier to forget because if you see it without judgment and, and under this light you'll see that what that person did even if it was painful it made you into who you are today it, it even fostered the strengths and developed those, those opportunities and strengths that you have today these are my three tips right so i told you that i would uh tell you about a tip uh, a tool where we can put all of this together instead of explaining to you the tool i'll tell you how it came about and how i used it so it was about two years ago i had already been through a psychologist in germany i had talked a little bit about what happened with my father some of you might know that uh, he he shot himself not very far away from where i was and that was uh that created a very deep wound back then right so i didn't really like to talk about that in the past and i got in uncomfortable so i did talk about that with my psychologist and i remember that i was a little bit sensitive during those days getting a bit sad and having some mem memories come back so i was on my desk i think i was doing some german homework or something like that and then i just felt sad you know i felt sadness and i thought uh you know, this is, I know what I have to do. So I just took out a, a pencil and a piece of paper and I went to my desk and I started writing. And I intuitively came out, came, um, came out with this sort of process that I told you as I was writing that letter. So first I started telling, it was a forgiveness letter. So that's the name of the tool. Um, I, was, I started just writing how I felt right how i felt to my father telling him how sad i felt when he did what he did how miserable how powerless i felt how frustrated how even guilty i felt I was just writing all of that down and pouring down my heart into that letter and i was crying you know like the, the paper was all wet but i kept on doing it i didn't really mind i i knew that this was it i was conscious that i was doing that for my own healing and this is another recommendation as you're doing that get involved as much as you can emotionally but have that little light of consciousness of that observer in you that knows that you're doing that because you you want to heal because otherwise you can get trapped into those emotions and that that's not really the purpose of the of the tool so just have that little voice and, and eye of your awareness in there at all times as you're doing this so I just wrote that sadness and everything that I felt. And then I moved into writing about how it had affected me, how insecure I became, how it affected me in my relationships, and how in some ways I became very anxious and a little bit depressed in the past and so to say miserable. I was just writing all of that and I got, ang I got angry, right? I got angry because because it was his fault in, in my in my idea in my head at that moment and because of the abandonment and, and because of not thinking of us as he did that so this really triggered a lot of anger and i just let it be you know i, I accepted it i knew that this was part of the healing and i stayed um, firm you know in the process as i got comfortable in the process of, of feeling that i started using the the third part the second part which is the compassion so i started empathizing a little bit with him and just understanding that in order for someone to have the courage to do that how much suffering did he have to go through how much pain how much sadness did he have to really um, ha go through to do what he did and i i was able to really close my eyes and to feel a little bit of that you know feel that sadness and when you feel that, the only thing that your heart can do is to really open up and to forgive and to accept and to let go. And that's, that's really what I felt I was doing at the, uh, at the moment when I was writing all of that. It was like a six, seven page letter in the end. And I felt really acceptance and forgiveness at that moment. And then I kept on writing, you know, I, I said, but thanks to this, really, uh, because of all of this, I am where I am today. I'm in Germany. I have, um, I'm starting to learn about um, self-development and I have read so many books about that that have allowed me to get to know myself better. And I have a good job and, and all of these things. I just started writing whatever came out of, of, 
of that painful experience. And in the end, I just felt good. You know, I felt even proud of myself. And um, this was like two years ago. I wasn't into coaching or anything like that at that moment. But I can tell you that if it were because of that, I wouldn't be speaking to you right now, to the camera, helping you or giving you this type of advice and, and telling you about my experiences. So all experiences from the past take us to where we are today and we can be proud of the, the strengths that were developed because of that. And that's it. That's the process that I uh, more or less developed intuitively as I was writing that letter. And let me tell you that after that I was sensitive. I, um, for some days I was, I, I would cry very easily. I thought maybe I did something wrong, you know, like I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have gone to a psychologist and, and asked him if this is right. But I just felt that's what I had to do. And after some days or, or weeks, I, I just felt lighter, you know, I felt like I, I just threw away a, a big weight that I had on, on my shoulder. And I was starting to feel more connection, more, it, it even felt, felt weird, you know, I felt more empathy towards people and even a little bit of love, more love towards my family, for example, which in the past wasn't that easy for me to feel and more connection. So yes, I was more sensitive to the sadness. Yes, I opened up those doors that maybe I was, uh, I didn't want to do in the past, but I was also feeling other emotions that were making me feel more alive. And that's powerful. That's really, really worth it. All right, so this has been today's weekly show. I hope that it wasn't too intense <laughs> or too emotional. And um, I will see you next time. Leave your comments. Let me know if this was of help to you. We'll talk very soon. Mm -hmm.